Okay, hey guys, thank you guys for joining me today. Um, today I'm gonna to teach you some basic things in Photoshop to help you, I hope, get you started um, down the path of editing in Photoshop. How about that? We'll start there. So let me share my screen. I've got a couple of images I'm gonna to try to, to post-process tonight for you. The first one's a pretty easy one because there's not a lot of um, blemishes or, or flaws in, in the model's skin. And then the second one's a little bit more complicated. So let me share the first one. Let me do that. So share my screen. Share that. Okay, so I hope you guys can see my Photoshop. There we go. So when I look at these images, I am, this is actually just natural light through a window. So there's no strobe here, that's just straight up natural light. I'm looking at the model and I see just a you know, you look at the face here and I see some blemishes in her face, very small, very, um, not very cumbersome or not very overwhelming. But I do wanna fix some of the blemishes. I do wanna fix the highlights on her face and on her nose. I do wanna bring some texture and contour to her face. But I'm gonna do it in a very simple way. I'm not gonna do anything, I'm not gonna use any kind of um, actions or razzle dazzle, you know, uh, was it MMMMMMMMMMMMMMMMMMMMMMMMMMMMMMMMMMMMMMMMMMMMMMMMMMMMMMMMMMMMMMMMMMMMMMMMMMMMMMMMMMMMMMMMMMMMMMMMMMMM
the model here is a makeup artist. So her makeup is really saving me a lot of retouching time. The next image we're gonna to get to is a little bit different. But for her, there's just not a lot of stuff I need to deal with. This right here on the, her lip, um, the top lip here, you can see where the, the, the line was that's kind of now missing, but we could put that in. And the way I do that, so we got the background layer done. I'm gonna create another layer on top of it. And this is where I start to paint. This will be my painting layer. We'll just call this painting. So that's gonna be on top. So now I am not, I'm not gonna dick around with the original image below. Uh, let's see here. Make my brushes smaller. But I make my brushes smaller by using the bracket keys. The, um, the left bracket reduces it, the right bracket increases it. So we're gonna reduce it down a little bit, zoom in a little bit more. But I'm gonna pick up this color. I'm gonna hold my, on the Mac it's an option key, I believe it's a control key on the PC. Somebody correct me if I'm wrong, because I don't use a PC. I'm gonna sample that color and I'm gonna start painting that line back in. So we get that line contour there. I wanna go a little smaller on that. So I'm putting that back that we kind of lost originally. You can see she, uh, the original makeup that she had applied, she had that, the outline of her lips done really well. So I'm just gonna like kind of put them back in for her. And then I'm gonna come back, just kind of bring my brush down a little bit. I'm gonna take my opacity down on this to, I don't know, 33 and bring this flow down a little bit as well. And I'm gonna start just kind of processing and putting some of that lip color back in here. I don't wanna to go too, too heavy. I still want it to look a little natural. I want it to pick up some places where we lost. I want it to, so if you look, there's the before and then there's the after. Pretty quick, nothing too, too special. So you kind of can see that there, we gave her some more shape back. This part of her lip, I'll get to in a second. We're gonna just darken that up a smidge. Say, so, well, actually we'll do it now. Same technique, I just grab my brush. I'm gonna leave that flow, maybe make this 50%. And kind of pick up colors from the outer lip and bring them up, pushing them towards the, I guess the back of the mouth there. Let me get some more flow. Kind of heavy. And you can hear that I'm just clicking as I paint the whole time. Yes, I could do it with the Wacom tablet, but I'm not. This is all, I don't know, basic Photoshop 101 pre Wacom. Because I don't think anybody starts off with Photoshop that or starts in Photoshop and automatically gets a Wacom tablet. So. Um, I believe that this, the, the Photoshop version I'm using, I think it's Creative Cloud. Uh, what is that, Bruce? Creative Cloud 2020? Looks, looks about right. I don't know. I think it's the, the most latest version of Creative Cloud. I yeah, once you're, once you're running Creative Cloud, you're always getting the latest and greatest. Okay, so that's what I'm running. This is not Photoshop 6 or Photoshop, you know, all those other Photoshops. Just not that. Ooh, that kind of kind of dark. Whee. And if you don't like that, guess what? You can come in here with an eraser tool. Take that right out. Check that out. Let me see what I got. All right, so let me go back in here with Sarah a little bit. So on the mask of the face, I'm gonna come in here and kind of redefine her nose a little bit and take out some of these highlights. So with this painting layer that I have, I'm just going to now, this is, I don't know, this is kind of like akin to dodging and burning, but I kind of like it better. Um, I mean, there's all kinds of different ways to, to edit an image. I kind of like, this a little bit. I'm learning more about dodging and burning and trying to be better at it. But again, we're just going to grab our brush. I'm going to sample um, 
an area of the skin. So I'm gonna grab this little, little bit of a darker skin tone area. Bring this brush up for me, a little bit bigger, because I'm just gonna work fast. Sample that and just kind of brush, whoops, that's a little too heavy. Let's undo that. Just take that down to 20, how about that? And then we'll just kind of bring this over and sort of try to get rid of that shine on the top of her forehead there. I'm probably going a little too heavy on the flow. Let me erase that, sorry. So I'm just going a little too heavy on that flow. So let me drop, drop this down, the opacity, sorry. I'll bring it down to, I don't know, 15, bring this down to 40. It's all about feel and touch. There's no right or wrong formula for that. Why is it not doing it? All right, here we go. It's not working now. What's going on? B for brush tool. Oh, all right, thank you. Thank you. Thank you, whoever said that, thank you. So I kind of go in and just cover up or get rid of that highlighted area. Come down to the bridge of the nose, make my bed tool a little smaller. This is where I pick up some highlights here. That's still too bright, I'm sorry. Yeah, it's all about flow and what you can do. So I kind of give her some stuff on the bridge. Come in here, I'm gonna darken this up a little bit. Mix the two together. Give her some shape. It looks like she's got this, I don't know, there's something here that's kind of bugging me about her nose. I don't know what you would call it, but it bugs me. So I just come in and play around with it a little bit. Zoom out. And as we go, I don't know if you could see the difference. There's, there's before and there's the after. So we're kind of giving her some Kind of slimming her up, not slimming her up, um, smoothing her out a little bit. I'm gonna grab this, give her some more of the like Rembrandtiness under her eye, just a little bit. Can bring some of that darkness back in here. I'm gonna come over here, and then here. I just kind of like want to push some of the light up into this corner to get rid of that little bit of black she has right there. Not much. And I'm going, if you see, I'm going with uh, the contour or the shape of her cheekbone. I'm not going up and down. I'm not going left and right. I'm going in a cheeky, motion, cheeky bone motion. We're picking up some more stuff along the way. This is kind of bugging me a little bit. There's a little bit of lipstick right there. So here I'll grab a clone tool and just get rid of that lipstick. A piece of lipstick kind of bugging me. There we go. I like that. Boink. So there's the before, there's the after. We're getting there. Let's do a couple more things here and then I'll move on to the next piece of this puzzle. Go back to my brush, kind of come back up here again. I want to grab some of this darkness again. And I am just gonna brush in ever so slightly here, make this a little darker coming in around her eyes. Come over here and make this a little darker. I could bring this makeup out a little bit more. And Sarah, the girls in this photograph, she's a super talented makeup artist. And the, the girl's just amazing. Um, but sometimes, you know, when you work with a lot of makeup artists, we try to follow, at least I try to follow the mask of their face and watch what they do as they apply it so I can kind of come back and do the same thing when I'm in Photoshop. Um, sometimes we lose a little bit of, um, lose a little bit of what they've done. And... Um, it's just nice to be able to put it back. So we're getting there. Um, her hair, there's a lot of strays hair, stray hairs up here. I'm not really concerned about those. Um, you can easily come into these, grab the um, spot 
healing brush tool and you can actually go through here and if you want to play and, and around and get rid of them you can get rid of a lot of these hairs that are out here um, there's a lot of ways to tackle that you can also just grab a brush and start painting the background color against her hair uh, up here the spot healing brush will work well in those crevices so it doesn't you're not losing uh, the hair or the cre uh, it just follows that that those colors that are up there so you can play around with all those if you want this is um so there she is right there oh yeah and that's the before let me zoom in a little bit it's kind of hard to see so that's the before and then that is my after a little bit better um but i want to do one more thing so now that i've got it there with her face you can always bring this down and start painting on her arms and and uh the other skin tones here if if you need to um i don't think i need to in this particular instance but i do want to like make her hair a little fluffy and so i'm just going to flatten the image right now um i am going to create another duplicate copy again i am going to go into the filter mode and go into liquify liquify is a pretty fun tool i i kind of dig it so here we can do a couple things um there's face shapes you can deal with you can deal with the mouse the nose the the mouth not the mouse the mouth the nose the eyes on this face so for example if i wanted to make her face thinner i would come down to the bottom here and i could sort of bring you see how her face is getting thinner or we can make it wider so you can play a little bit, play around with that a little bit, but I didn't come in here for that. I came in here for this wonderful little tool up at the top here, this warp tool. We are gonna do something that's gonna make her look funny, but it's going to really kind of do something different. So we kind of grab around and pull the hair out a little bit, give it a little bit of shape, give it a little bit of more volume. And I can even pull this out a little bit just to kind of show you. So I'm really gonna maybe exaggerate that a little bit. So the eyes a little bit wonky. So we got that. So you see, it's kind of a little, it's a little wonky. Now this is kind of something I I learned recently. So with her, with her, with the image on top, I'm gonna create a mask. Wrong mask, sorry. Um, I create a background mask and I grab my brush again. Grab the white, make it white. White reveal, was it white, black? I don't know, black reveals, white, I forget how that goes. But anyway, so with our brush, I just kind of come in here and I'm gonna paint um, around the outsides here with the white brush, fixing the opacity, of course, and the flow. Um, but watch what happens to her hair on the side of her face. So it kind of like makes it larger and gives her more like the queen kind of volume that I want in this image. But it doesn't, I mean, I could come in here and really show you that, but switch back to a black brush, I can paint it out and get it back to where I want it. So there are some things that are going on up here that, that bug me a little bit. Oops. But you can see that it makes her hair larger. It gets boink. Give her a little, little volume there. Ah, we'll keep it. We'll keep it short though. That's kind of neat. I like that. So I think that um, that that one is done. Any questions? Oops. There was a comment from Ted about um, that you're losing like texture and pores on the skin. Um. Yeah. Well, that's part of my design when I when I develop or when I post process my models. I want them to be. I don't want to lose too much of the pores. I mean, I can always go back and bring the opacity back to bring some pores back. Um, I don't want them to look too porcelain, but you can still see that in here, she does still have some pores. That's, they're not all gone. So I'm just kind of getting rid of some of that stuff. Not all of it. There's still a lot of it in there. That's a good comment, though. So it really depends on you as an artist what you want to do and how much you want to um how much you want to change of a of a person you know what i mean 
I'm going to drop the old logo in there, and I'll just go ahead and save it out. Place it, dang it. Sorry, I just want to save this so I can move on. All right, here we go. Let's go to another image. Anything else about this one? Anybody want any questions about this one before I go to the next one? Anybody? So in here, um, this model, this is from Ireland last year and love the way she looks. Um, she's got a little bit more of challenging, challenging skin. You can see all the blemishes that she has in her skin here and there's flyaway hairs across her face. And again, I would, I, would, I would attack this in the same manner as I did the last one. Um, I'm gonna create a background image or duplicate that image. And I'm just gonna go right on top of this and start knocking out some of the blemishes really fast with the spot healing tool. I love this tool. It, is a, it does a really good job. And if you wanna get rid of flyaway hairs, make the brush a little bit bigger than the hair that you're trying to get rid of. And it does a pretty good job of of getting rid of that. At least I think it does. Um, there are times it goes a little wonky. Well, start over and try it again. And then in here, I'm just going to bang this out and get these out of the way. You also have to figure out, you know, some of these blemishes actually may be like their personality. I mean, not blemishes, but the um, there might be uh, beauty marks that need to stay, there might need to be freckles that don't need to be removed, just that kind of stuff. You have to be aware of your model and what you want to do, but if you're creating something artistic, you can do whatever the heck you want to do. You can take out whatever you want. I've seen beautiful models with lots of adorable freckles, just somebody would just wipe them all out. I'm like, that's, that's not right. You don't do that to freckles. But they did. Oops. And again, this is all done with a mouse. And you could do this with a with a Wacom tablet or whatever your your choice of tool is. It doesn't necessarily need to be a mouse, but I figured that most people have what I have and I'm gonna teach to that that particular skill set. So not too shabby. She's got a little bit of, little bit of a challenge here. some scarring on her face that she's probably had from All right, so with that going on, we've got, there's the before, and then there's the after. So it's pretty good. So it did a pretty good job of cleaning up with just that one tool. There's some, um, I mean, the tools that Adobe has for you are pretty pretty snazzy and, and well-designed. Um, there might be some little snafus with some of them, but for the most part, they are geared to, to produce really good results for you. At least I think they are. So from there, um, I do like that. So I'm going to save this real quick. Sorry, I'm um... All right. 
Um, so one of the cool things you can do here, I like the result of her face. So I'm going to just flatten the image. And then I'm going to draw a marquee around her face here because now I'm going to go back into that, um, to the, what do you call it? Oh God, I'm drawing a blank. The liquify tool. Duh. So go back into the liquify tool, but if you marquee it, it only pulls up that image, that part of the image. Um, so like here in her hair, I do want to bring this down a little bit. Oops. You see how her hair is kind of going up there in the corner. Um, it's kind of just bring it in a little bit so it's not so far out there. I can also adjust her the width of her face if I wanted to, which I don't. She's got a pretty, pretty nice face. So I just wanted to kind of bump that down. So there's the before and then there's the, oops. Where's my after? Where'd it go? It went away. Hold on. So you're looking for things like that. You don't have to be that particular, but that kind of bugs me as I looked around her face. Now I'll just another, create another layer and I'm gonna go back in here and I will um, paint again, pick up some textures and actually add some, try to add some dimension by making parts of her face a little darker. So we'll grab our little uh, pen tool or brush tool. I'm gonna drop this down to 10% just to kind of make it a little bit lighter or 11. This is 31. Usually like nine and 31 seem to be the numbers I use, end up using a lot, but so I kind of come in here and I'm just going to grab and just brush. Kind of smooth out the, the differences in that skin tone a little bit. Try to match them up a little bit more. There's a little bit of darkness under her eyes. I want to get rid of that. So I kind of come and just push the Push the um, lighter skin up into the darker skin. You could, let me see, can you see that? There's a little bit of darkness under the eyes. I took that out for her. Like this darkness here, I wanna get rid of. So I'll come in here, select or sample that skin color and just kind of bring it back and forth. Really mix it in a little bit. Um, and I'm not losing any of the, I mean, I guess I'm losing a little bit of texture and skin tone, but. I'm actually picking up the skin color and making it a little bit, I don't know, trying to match it better than, I don't know, the, the, the tools would do for you. So we got that to that. Again, coming on the bridge of the nose, getting this to really be a bridge looking thing. Coming in here and grabbing some of the darker tones shaping the nose a little bit better, coming on top of the eyelid. I want to pick up this tone, really give her cheekbones, accent that those cheekbones a lot. Danny, have you used frequency separation to do things like this? Um, all the time. Yeah, I use frequency, but I didn't, I didn't want to start off with the frequency separation. I do it all the time. I do it all the time. But this was kind of the way I learned like five years ago and I thought it'd be a, a great way to show people uh, kind of a basic retouching thing before they jumped into something more advanced. I, I don't know. I think frequency separation could be advanced. Some people just don't understand it right away. But it, it, I would do this as a frequency separation all day long. I wouldn't even do what I'm doing now. I just kind of want people to get more bang for their buck out of their Adobe products. I know you probably hate Adobe products too. But yeah, frequency separation. Um, there's lots of tutorials on it online. I think Amesh from Pixel Perfect has a great one. I also think he also I think he has a free um, a free download for you to to run the action. I can do that if you want to see it. Uh, uh, yeah, there are a number of uh, free actions out there from Pixel Perfect and from Flurn. Yeah. Um, and yeah, because it was what I was thinking was if you did it on the uh, low frequency layer, exactly mm -hmm. what you're doing now, yep. then you wouldn't touch the 
the skin yeah. texture. Well, let's try that. You want to try that? We got some time. So let me finish this up and we'll come back to this one. We'll do it all over again. But I'm kind of digging her skin tones and the way that it looks. It's figured it out. It's done a little bit better of a job, or at least that's kind of how it goes. But I'll show you how it works, or I'll do a frequency separation and see if that there's a difference. Let me save this. Well, let me, I don't know. Should I save this? I guess I will. All right. somebody, somebody asked for a demo on frequency separation. We certainly could do another. Um, I think we should probably do as another class separately on it. Yeah, I think we should do as another class only because I mean, really, if I start showing it to people, I don't want to confuse anybody. It, it's it's a great thing to do. I remember when we did it at Maryland PPA years ago. People were. I, I don't want people to be frustrated and going. I'll never learn Photoshop. I want them to at least have some basic skills going into it. Does that make sense? But I think that we should have a separate class on that, and I'm happy to teach it. So um, let's just stick with what we're doing. So if you like that, that's great. And then we can just save that, and and she's done. So there's the there's the after. A little retouching looks way better than it did in the beginning, I think. Then. If you really want to see something slick, so the same image, we're just gonna we're gonna reopen it. I'm not gonna save it. So this is what I what I meant by trying not to confuse everybody, because there's so many things to do. Like if we if we go into, I mean, there's Bruce will even tell you. Even in if you're familiar with Lightroom, you can do this in Lightroom too. You can you can take some of the texture away, smooth their skin out. Um, there's products like Portrait Three that you can use that are, that are just, they're crazy good. I mean, you just click a button and you're done. So like all that retouching we did earlier, it's pretty much done. I mean, you can't beat that, but I didn't want to go into all of the ins and outs of, I guess, you know, the, the actions or the, the programs you could use, but there's lots of ways to smooth skin and Photoshop. So, those are my two examples. I mean, does anybody have any questions? Did I, do you want, want to see something else? Or are you think you're, I'm, I'm waiting for questions, but you guys are not really talkative tonight. Hey, Danny. Yep. When, you, when you're looking at an, at an image like this, um, why don't you talk us through like what you're seeing and where you want to get to? You know what I mean? So, I mean, I understand like if there are blemishes and stuff, you want to deal with them. But mm -hmm. like, let's say you have a picture of a pretty girl you right. know, how do you like have an end in mind? Like when you see it, what are you looking at and where do you want to go? Right. That sort of creative thought about it. Right. Well, okay. So let's start with this same girl. This is Sarah. You know, Sarah is uh, just a beautiful model. So when I photographed this, I knew that I wanted to, for it to be a moody image when I shot it to begin with. So I pulled up in Lightroom. This is not Lightroom. This is, um, Adobe Bridge, but this is the, the beginning point of the image. This is what I look at. I'm looking at her face. I'm looking at these highlights on her skin. I start to attack this image about how can I make this look like I want it to. This is sort of the vision that I want, but I'm losing some detail. There's nothing in her eyes. I've lost some details in the blacks. So I, you know, bring up the shadows or bring up the blacks, bring up the blacks, bring back the highlights to give it some mood. Um, that's kind of where I'm going. That, my thought process is I know how I shot it to begin with. And from that point, I mean, this all begins on site. This is not like I sit down on my computer and go, oh, God, this one's going to look like this. This is how I attacked this particular image. Is I wanted it to be moody. I wanted it to be like she was waiting for somebody to come um, to her mansion and, and just, you know, bring her a pizza. I'm just kidding. But so that's kind of my thought process for at least for my vision. Um, with that, this is the end product. This is the end portion of it. So same image that you just saw done a lot. I think a lot better. We come in on it, you know, things are done. Her face is redone. The eyes are popped out a little bit. There's more, um, light coming across her body that gives her shape and dimension. So I wish, let me see here. Give me a sec. 
Uh, do this, Bruce. Stupid Adobe. What am I doing? Oh. All right, well, I'm having a tough time opening up that last one. What are you trying to accomplish? I'm trying to open up the, I'm gonna put them side by side so you guys can see them. You, you can just place it as if it was, you know, another layer, just place it on there so you can switch between them. I don't even know where it is anymore, so. Never mind. Oh, there it is. So that's, I mean, those are the reasons, or I guess, I don't know if that's the, I don't know if that answers your question, Bruce, but I just try to, to envision what I want and then go for it. Kind of odd, but. I think my question was more about the retouching side. Like when you, when you. Okay. You so. Know, like, yep. yeah. Do you know, like when yep. you decide to make her hair bigger and stuff like that, how do you, you know, are you, is that like spontaneous or, you know what I mean? Now those are, that's something that I always go into every image wanting to do. I always want to make uh, somebody's hair bigger if I can, because I don't have any hair. And it makes it easier for me to like to do that. But to attack an image like this. So, you know, somebody asked if you could demonstrate how to fix her eyebrow. No, because that's the way her eyebrow is. I mean, I could do it though. But this is the way, that's the way Sarah's eyebrow is. That's, it's kind of weird that she cuts it like that, but that's, that's her. But it's very simple to do. Let me, let me open it up for you. But to answer Bruce's question, um, when I'm, when I post process an image, I always start with the blemishes first, no matter what I do. That's the first thing that comes out. Blemishes, flyaway hairs are the first thing that I always post process out if I have to. And then I'll go to look at something and say, okay, do I need to liquefy anything? Is somebody's, does somebody have a muffin top that needs to be liquefied? Do they want to make them a little bit skinnier? Um, I, I look at liquefy for, for that function. I also look at the hair and say, okay, Sarah has this hair going on. She could use a little bit more volume that would just make it look fuller and give her that more glamorous feel. So it's blemishes, stray hairs, um, hair, making the hair wider, and then making body parts slimmer. Sometimes I, I play around with the arms. I'll pinch in the waist a little bit. Um, not not a lot that it makes it, I mean, you would never know. Um, there are times where I make the body longer and just, you know, maybe just stretch her a little bit. There are, so I start with those basics right there and then just work around those. And then I work on the face. The last thing I do is, is really work the mask of the face, get it to be, get it to look like, it just really give it more three dimensions. So sometimes things are a little bit flat lit. I can add some shadow to one side of the face, to the nose, to really give that face a little bit more dimension. So that's kind of the, how the, my thought process is with all that stuff. At least that's when I do, how I do most of my stuff. Um, if it's just a regular old corporate headshot, it's all about the blemishes and stray hairs. It's not really a lot about retouching all the, or making things look smooth, making them look, a, look like a Barbie doll, unless they really request it. If that makes any sense. All right, so you guys want me, to, here's what we do for Sarah's eyebrow. If this is her eyebrow. Okay, so this is, it's very simple. This little connection here, I mean, just to get, I'm gonna do it on another layer so you can see it. I would bring in a cloning tool and I would just take my cloning tool and I would stamp right across this area. That's how I would do that. Pretty simple. Well, that's pretty good. Uh, yep. You were asked, do you play with the histogram at all? Nope. Nope. I, well, I'll, I lie. Um, I lie because what you're seeing here are images that were edited in Lightroom first. So I do play with the exposure, the compensation, the, the uh, the white balance, whatever I need to do to make it look better before I bring it to Photoshop. So these were kind of pre-edited in Lightroom for exposure, but histogram, I, I, I'm not a big histogram person. I know a lot of people do, 
the only time I really use histograms is if I'm doing school portraiture. If I'm doing um, schools, I will have a gray card. I will line it up. I will make sure that that lines right down the middle and I'm done. But for this stuff, if you're talking about using a histogram, like for this particular image, no, nope. it's all shot straight out of camera. I use aperture priority and I'm focusing on this whitest spot of her face to get this image as, as dark as I can get it. There's, I don't use, um, I don't really pay attention to the histograms. I know that sounds really bad and I apologize. It's probably like the worst thing a photographer could say, but. Let me stop sharing the screen and get back to you guys live. There you are. All right. No, don't play with the histograms. Anything? What else? All right. So we'll do a we'll do a frequency separation class in the near future. I'll see if somebody wants to do that. Um, I could certainly do it. Bruce, I know, can do it. If you guys want to, it's it's um, just be prepared. <laughs> That's a it's a great class. Um, at least frequency separation is a great thing to 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 see and do. Uh, it might take you guys a little bit of understanding to do that because I don't know. I, I just, if you're a beginner Photoshop person, frequency separation is going to um, frustrate you in the beginning. But once you get it, it's going to be awesome. So any other questions for me guys? Did I, did I really, did I answer any, did I miss any questions? Did, did I, did I bore any? you? Yes. Do you ever use the patch tool for sections of blemishes instead of using Sometimes, yeah, it depends. Yeah, I'll use, all, I'll use the whole arsenal of Adobe, um, the Adobe tools. It depends on what it is. But for the most part, those are the three or four that I use when I do um, retouching. But the patch tool is a good tool. Um, there's also the other healing brush where you actually can grab some of the color and let do it that way. There's all kinds of tools. It's really up to you what you want to do and how you want to do it. Um, and what tools you feel comfortable with. So, yep. You guys are really quiet tonight. Did I did I bore you that much? Man, okay. Well. They know it's being recorded. Oh. <laughs> if you guys have any questions for me, please, you know where to find me. And um, if not, I'll let you guys go off and have a wonderful evening. Goodbye, everybody. <laughs> All right. Danny. Thank you, Danny. Oh, Thank you're welcome. Hey, Thank Hazel, you. did you learn anything? Please say yes. I found it very interesting to watch what you did. Was it better than Paul? <laughs> <laughs> A loaded question. <laughs> yeah, well, thank you guys for coming and joining me. I appreciate it. All right, guys, I'm going to end this. I'm going to stop the recording, and I appreciate you guys. Have a good night, everybody.